Welcome to the bold analysis. Musalia Ndavadi, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, has dropped a hint that William Samoy Ruto is considering a cabinet reshuffle. And that leak from Davadi has really sent panic through in the cabinet. This is coming uh, just a day after Davadi held a closed door meeting with Francis Atuoli, Moses Masika Wetangula, in a meeting that has really attracted sharp um, uh, that attracted elicited debate in the country as far as this is concerned. Remember Mdavadi is also supposed to be in Kisumu today for the first time he will be in Kisumu this Friday to launch the Kisumu show um, agricultural ex exhibition in Mamboleo. That is going to be his first tour in Kisumu uh, since taking over that post of chief cabinet secretary. And so this is very critical. I want us to do drop uh, to do a critical analysis on this, and they have explained that the tool they are going to use are the tools of um, performance assessment. And I want to say, for without benefit of doubt, that it has no longer been a cabinet reshuffle in the history of this country can no longer be about the performance, because when it comes to performance. There are many parameters and not just the cabinet secretary as the person to take full responsibility. This is something that I want us to look at. Who is at risk? Let's try to narrow down to the four and I'll tell you um, what exactly, uh, why the four are um, actually facing the chopping board. Moses Kuria has been at the center of controversy and he has been a venom that has been used against the media and other politicians. And recently, we understand that um, United States trade representative in the country, Catherine Tai, declined to meet Moses Kuria in his office, and when he met William Ruto in State House, when she met William Ruto in State House, Moses Kuria was also still not allowed to be part of that meeting. In U.S., uh, it, we understand that U.S. had taken some very stern action and even uh, sanctioned some leaders from visiting the country. Um, and the list was lightly mentioned around those who the U.S. intelligence believe were behind uh, the sporadic protests in the country. Of course, the breach of human rights, including that of attack on, um, on Urgenera's farm. And the U.S. representative said that it is because of Moses Kuria's faulty mouth. Uh, William Bro had to pick Adam, I think that some, some Canaan, some other uh, diplomat, uh, some leader to take charge of that negotiation because Moses Korea was kicked out by the U.S. U.S. is a very, our strong trading partner. I've always said the, U, the IMF and the World Bank are all under U.S. indirectly. And so, because of financial partners, they are our financial partners, apart from funding government projects, they're also funding some very key um, behavior health projects like uh, malaria. Um, you have USAID. The USAID is a very key financer here in this country. And because of a relationship with the US, I see Moses Kuria facing the chopping board. Secondly, Florence Bore. Florence Bore is Labour CS and she's been in the limelight recently the latest controversy was between her and a member of parliament from Mount Kenya. And it was all about the buying of a house. And government felt that it actually exposed a government negatively because 
Kenyans were asking how a CS who recently, while um, undergoing probe, uh, undergoing audit during the interview, facing the interview panel in Parliament, um, the kind of um, wealth that she stated, and then months later, she's hoping millions to buy such a house, and the fact that, and the problem is not buying the house, the fact that that controversy had to come in the limelight has been a big issue. Remember, even some MPs had complained to the CS that she had not uh, obeyed summons the National Assembly even to answer some queries. And that was led by Kimani Chungwa. So because of lack of synergy, she would most probably be sacrificed over something I'm going to explain. The other third aspect is Kituri Kindiki. Kituri Kindiki heads interior CS. The interior ministry has been dogged with seeds of discord. As we speak, it is actually in the corridors that Kindiki is not working, doesn't have a very good working relationship with the IG. And just at the height of the protest, I remember Kindiki coming out to castigate the police, telling them that they will take personal responsibility. But after it, and he was speaking about law, saying that if protesters protesting and is not armed, he should be left. Should, no one should bother such. And it, it brought controversies, including um, the, the promotion of 500 officers between IG and NPS. The CS had a distinct position, but that, that will not be part of it. Um, Kidiki is the, in the ministry where the ministry right behind the police brutality that has really been experienced and as people have seen the face of humanity. So Kithuri Kindiki could still be in for it and he will be of reshuffle to save face. You know, it is in the security sector that whenever something happens, you will always see county commissioner moved, the DCI moved, some OCS and some constables moved from one police station to the other. And, and it's normally to conceal, it's first for concealing some, um, some, some dark stuff. And number three, it's also to save face. Probably the government will want to handle things now differently. And then, you know, even if the new protest is coming and they don't want now to move the pro, they don't want now to, they want to change the way they counter the protest, they just change the CS. And Aisha Jumwa. I do believe that Aisha Jumu was picked. The reason why Aisha Jumu is a CS is because of Kingi. Because in the power sharing deal, William Ruto blindly gave Kingi the Speaker of the Senate. And because they had to project the politics of sanity, they had to give Kingi that Speaker, that Senate Speaker, even though I know Ruto personally was not contented with that. But after giving Kingi, uh, the beneficiary of that, because Kingi got his during power sharing deal, between his party and that of Kenya Kwanza and other Kenya Kwanza affiliates. Kenya Kwanza affiliates. So Aisha Juma got his her, uh, her CS position, um, affirmative action and public works, uh, public services, public works and affirmative action. She actually got it because King had been given and she's been a founding member. But the card was to help consolidate the coastal vote. If you ask me, I don't think she has the enough visibility and the vigor to push a coastal vote in William Ruto's basket. But then, what is the hidden plan? That is what is uh, very important. I want us to look at what is the hidden plan in the whole discussion about reshuffling. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly subscribe to our channel. But I want to have some good news for you before we move to that part of this podcast. Are you within Nairobi and you want to move your office items or household uh, items from one place to the other? Be it uh, your laptop, your machines, and your office furniture. Then for you to move them safely, you need professional, affordable, reliable company. That is why Topmark Movers are the best into that space. Move your uh, stuff from one town to the other from one office, relocation from one place to the other. 
you need to contact Top Mark Movers now and let's support these fellows, guys. They're doing amazing work in supporting and helping you move from one place to another. Contact them here, uh, 07 19 And I can confirm to you that your relocation is smartly sorted. Top Mark Movers quality is everything. Now, the hidden game plan in this shakeup is just three. And I'll be very straight. William Ruto wants to counter ethnic profiling narrative. He might include, I may not be shocked to see, bringing in new faces from the other uh, uh, other marginalized communities. Now, I want to explain ethnic profiling in two ways. Number one is on the, the debate about over-representation of the two tribes, over-representation of the Kalenjin and Kikuyu. Now, this is a discussion that has been here for long, I, if, if you remember. This is something that has been talked about for long. And he might sacrifice one or two people, but most probably from his tribe, because from the Kalenjin, because um, th there will be no political loss. You know, like if you look at uh, Florence Bores from Kerecho and Kerecho's Kipsigis, and one of the Kipsigis leaders from there is uh, Bomet, uh, former Bomet governor Isaac Ruto, who has also been given a position in JSC. So, and again, Florence Bores has not been so much aggressive in terms of the political mobilization including even, uh, uh, but there are others that are deal makers that cannot be moved. And so, the ethnic profiling is on rep over representation of the two tribes. You want to bring in and to save face, but also important is about the um, current protest. Huh? Luo community was highly targeted. I, I will not, we are not going to get tired and sugarcoat this thing into other words. The truth here is the Luo community, uh, the fellows that were living in Kibera, um, um, Mandare and Kisumu, uh, they really felt the better, the, the bigger pinch of the uh, security officers. So they will also want to bring such. Remember, even as we speak, uh, there have been a discussion in the corridors about uh, some, some funny, funny power sharing deal. I don't want even to listen to that. About it is me once three cabinet slots, and I don't know what, I don't know what. So what, what William Ruto would actually do, if you ask me, is to go behind the scene. As this discussion is going on, he might use this cabinet reshuffle to dangle some positions in the Azimio corridors. Because, let me tell you, Azimio is not that much held together. There are people that if they are called to take up cabinet positions now, they're in the side of their Azimio, but their soul is not there. If they are called to take up cabinet positions, they'll run in government. They'll go to government running. I can tell you. We cannot mention names. But this is something that uh, some few uh, people in the corridors know very well. So it can be used. Go get Mata Karua, you know, look for Kalonzo Musioka here. Tell Kalonzo, give me some one or two people, you know, and then you will detonate the Azimi activities. That is why we will hear William Ruto speaking with a lot of vigor while at the coast. That you know what? I stopped reggae, I'm going, also going to stop, um, I'm also going to stop uh, protest. There is something that seems to be going on. The other second thing here is the government, William Ruto wants to sacrifice some ministry that has put government in the limelight negatively. And that is two ministries, if you ask me, interior and that of trade, that of Moses Kuria. Interior is in the essence of its actions and the handling of the protest. It has really, really been condemned by international community and the media and a number of other um, stakeholders in the country on how they manhandled, they mistreated some protesters. And that of Moses Kuria has also been attacking the media. Remember the, 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 the Malaya Sala against media and the way, he, the way he attacked the nation media owner, Your Highness Aga Khan, so his highness aga khan so this they are that that they have crossed the line in fact moses Kura has crossed the line i may not be shocked to see him in the chopping bone but lastly 
there will also be dodging corruption loopholes. There are some people that have really are facing the chopping board because of some corruption and to cover up because what William Ruto wants to do is he will not want anything that will dent the image of the UDA. So that's my position, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for supporting our podcast. Let's meet in the next.